So I'm back. I've been busy. All right, you can see the work table's clear because I got the GSX 1100G over there by the door. Um, what I was saying before, this was a radiator cap from a Model T or Model A. I don't remember which. And there was a fairly well-known author from here on South Dakota, Mark Smith. And uh, Mark passed away here not too long ago. Heck of a nice guy. And he, I think he knew he was dying because uh, I went to visit him. And he proceeded to uh, start giving me things from his garage. I said, oh, wow, that's a beautiful little radiator cap. So what was that with the wings? He said, well, that's a radiator cap to a T or an A. I don't remember which. You know, I'm not really familiar with vehicles of that vintage. But he hands it to me. Just, oh, here, take that. But you see, it's threaded on the outside. So my quick measurement says it's somewhere on the market of a 2-inch, 18 thread per inch thread. 2, 18. Now, maybe it was aftermarket because... It's about 1.975 major diameter, so it's not really 2, but it's definitely 18. It sure as hell isn't metric. So anyway, what I started doing instead is I, I kind of back-figured the major to the minor and uh, got in there with a 60-degree threading insert and single-pointed threaded a hunk of tubing here. And then that's that's not counterboard, actually pressed in a separate piece on this end with a half 13 hole in the middle to make this coupler. There. So anyway, I don't, I, I can say I made that thread on the inside to 2 inch 18 thread per inch, except what I actually did is I just made a pass, checked the part, made a pass, checked the part until the little brass cap fit into the thread so it's a custom made part there so that'll hold him now and that's a half 13 hole so it'll allow me to rotate because let's say i bolt him down here and that's forward oops all right it's not pointed forward but anyway by that being threaded which i can do my bolt on the back side and i can make sure that he lands facing forward and then lock tight him in place if need be so anyway, I got that done. There, it's a nice little piece. But that's the sort of silly little stuff I do around here. But guys like Mark Smith, he had a good garage like this one. And he made stuff and he worked on stuff. And an old vintage race car he had a hand in too. Um, is in a museum in Huron. I should stop by and take a look at that. A fairly well known. I don't remember if it was 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, but anyway, you know, it's a kind of an iconic race car in the Huron area. Here was the other thing I worked on. So I have my official casting sand rather than my moon sand, and it dried out. And then I was asking uh, supposed experts how to revive it, and uh, one person said, "Well, you had to mix oil back into it." So I did that. And then the next guy pops up with, what color is it? I said, gray. He says, oh, the gray stuff, you're supposed to use water. Well, too late. I'd already dumped in the oil. Oops. That's what I get for getting advice off the Internet. But I tried to use it anyway and make another one of those Peterbilt forms. And you can see it, a uh, you know, big porosity and everything. I mean, <laughs> big pockets. And I think that was pockets of gas, of, uh, of uh, smoke, as it was smoking. But I could still maybe use that um, sand if I was doing a cavity, if I printed a cavity out of wax or something. So uh, I'm going to cut this back up and remelt it. But it's kind of a lesson learned about taking advice from people off, uh, even when I say off the internet in general, but specifically off of Facebook pages where they're supposedly into metal casting. It's no guarantee you're going to get an expert. But it didn't fill well. I don't know if I needed to let it sit there and get hotter and hotter and hotter because you can see it didn't fill well over here. Anyway, it was, it was kind of a fail. I'll cut it all back up and remelt it and do it again. But I got the lift table all cleared and ready for uh, that 
Motoguchi that's going to be showing back up. Uh, maybe I'll work on a fender for the sidecar rig over there for a bit. And, uh, I don't know. I could bring the side uh, sidecar for uh, metallic waste in and actually hang it on the GSX 1100G. But as I got it off the lift, the brakes in the back brake caliper was dragging something awful. So, all right, guess I have to disassemble that brake caliper further. I had just uh, bled it out and thought that was good enough. And nope, I'm going to have to disassemble that caliper because it's, uh, it's dragging. So usually what that is is the O-ring in the piston bore for the brake caliper has got some dried fluid behind it. And you have to scrape that out and clean it out real good, put it back together, bleed it out. And that'll usually cure it. But anyway, Jenny Mac... I'm going to, when I post this, I'll actually tag Jenny Mack in it, because Jenny Mack was also a friend of Mark Smith's, and she'll appreciate um, this little hood ornament. I'll be able to mount it. Uh, probably I'll put it on one of my, hood of my, one of my sidecars, probably. But, uh, yeah, kind of a neat little bit of South Dakota history. Mark Smith gave me that and before he passed away, and uh, now I'll actually be able to mount it on something. Here you go, guys.